All right. What you are looking at here is a vintage power trim and tilt system. Yeah, off of a 1976 140 horsepower, I believe this is. Uh, motor is probably junk, but really what I'm after is this setup. So, motor does not spin or turn whatsoever. So, I'm going to see if I can't fix it without spending a whole bunch of money. Uh, first step is to remove the unit from the outboard to get the motor off, access to it. Uh, eh, I don't want to do that, but I'm going to. So, let's get it off. One thing you should know about this is it uses quite a bit of specialty hardware. A lot of shoulder bolts, a lot of weird stuffs. I wouldn't say a lot. It uses some specialty hardware. With specialty hardware, you don't want to lose it, you don't want to break it. Because hunting it down is going to be difficult. Such as these shoulder bolts here. Not something you just stroll across and expensive to replace. So, you want to... You want to do what you can to make sure you don't lose or damage the stuff. We have two bolts under here. Right here and right here. This one's missing. I don't really feel like moving the camera. There's not really much to these things. Really what's unique is the bracketry. You, you would think you could duplicate this if you had the brackets to mount some cylinders. You figured you'd be able to get two little cylinders. Replace these and this with something modern and working and be able to duplicate your own kind of power trim and tilt. I don't know if anybody's ever looked into that or not. If this doesn't work, if I can't get it working, maybe I'll go to the hydraulic shop and see what my options are. Uh, otherwise, unit came right off for the most part. Didn't really seem like we had any stuck or fighting bolts. This thing isn't, I mean, it's ugly, just it's not too rusty. So I don't think we're going to really have any issues here. So here is our manual release valve. I'm going to pull that out and loosen it. We'll find out there's a built up of pressure when we pull that motor off. But there shouldn't be anyway. Yeah, that looks like a bunch of water in there. Yeah, that's, that's just water. All right, so I think we're gonna have one rusty looking motor. So that's not, uh, that's not a good sign. This pin is a little rusty, but it's moving. So I can't complain about that. So we got some water in the bottom, but fluid on top. So I guess that's, you know, something. And there's our motor. Go 
we'll set this off the side for safekeeping. Yeah, I set it down and it fell. That's what that noise was. And here is our So we should have all the bot screws out of the bottom. No pressure built up or anything. So should be able to pop this off somehow. Yeah, I should see that. This is why I can't have nice things. There is unique smell to transmission fluid mixed with water. If you've ever changed a transmission in the rain before, that's kind of what this smells like. I do think the hydraulic pump is working. Because when I spin this, it starts pumping. Whether it's holding pressure or not, that's a whole different story. So I put the oil in there to spin it over. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I put some oil down the hole so I can turn it over, and you can see uh, it forcing water out as well, which I suppose is kind of my goal. All right. So, there is a lot of problems here. One of which, we need a $200 motor right there. The other problem is we don't know if this hydraulic pump down here is going to work. We don't know if this line is going to leak. And we don't know if the seals inside that cylinder are any good. The cylinder seals are kind of a problem. If I had a local well-stocked hydraulic shop, they could probably uh, match up the old one for me. Problem is there's no local shop. The only thing local is a hose man. He could make that, I'm sure, but not the actual seals. So I would need to get into a big city to get that matched up. It's all doable. Just how much money do I spend? Feel like spending in this thing. Um, I, what I really want to do is get this motor apart. The problem is these two screws are rounded off. And it doesn't look like they were rounded off by somebody who didn't know what they were doing. It looks like it was purposely rounded off to keep people like me out of there. Uh, which isn't really a problem, but it is because getting those out is going to suck. Uh, when I say it's not really a problem, you can just drill the heads off. Which is what I'm going to have to do. Because there's no grab there. Problem is that you then you have to extract the rest of the screw and that's not going to be fun. But here's the thing. I already need one. So by me taking it apart, I'm potentially ruining it. However, it's already ruined. So I can't really make the damage worse.
Yep. All right, looks like we got some custom repairs with some uh, looks like duct tape, red kind, so that's good. All right, so we have a well burnt looking armature down here, a lot of corrosion. One stuck brush. Oh, jeez. This thing is destroyed. One seized motor. Seized in the armature. I mean, this thing is screwed up. So. Yeah, we don't need this here anymore. So you can see how black it is, and then you can see all the this stuff coming out of there. That all just came out of the motor, so. Moral of the story is, I don't think this motor's any good. Might be able to replace just the little field here. See if I have something I can hammer on there to hammer the inside out of it. So, it ain't pretty. Not as bad as you'd think, though. Let me clean it up. So the motor was originally seized in here. Like, I tried turning it, just wasn't going to happen. Saw me hammer it out of there. It came out, so I could probably clean up that inner bushing and probably get the whole thing spinning again. It, in fact, it feels pretty good there. Copper contacts, they're not too bad either. Now, this would probably still work. I'm not a big fan of these custom contacts here. I understand that it's too it was too close for them to work. Though we can see what happened here to the brushes. Get that spring out of there. You can see this one right here is just fused to the body, so it wasn't it wasn't doing anything. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty done for. Actually, the whole assembly is. You can see. It's caved in, it's no longer flat. Let's see if I have a straight edge. So you can see what's happening there. That one side's caved down. Uh, don't quite know how that happened, but we also have a broken spring right here. So this is this is pretty well destroyed.
I have devised a way to get this thing to spin. All right, I have another temporary motor hooked up to the uh, armature. Right, the motor shaft thing. And it's all back together. Now let's see what happens. Saw it though, right? Might be out of fluid. There. It's a more donor. Blow it up in here. Alright, we just popped a blood vessel. They're leaking everywhere. Here we go. Oh, look at it go. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, life is good. Okay, with the plug seal in, I'm going to try to run it backwards to see if we can get it to go down. Uh, if we overfilled this and we run it backwards, something will explode. However, I think it'll probably come through the, uh, the bushing inside of the motor shaft here. Or it's going to pop this off. We'll see. Hopefully nothing blows up. We have a small leak going down here. So the leak is at the top up here, right here on this fitting, and I think the reason it's leaking there is because I now remember I never tightened it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm funny. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at it go. <laughs> Not too bad. Let's uh, put it down, I guess. <laughs> so as it turns out, they made two pumps for these power trim tilt units back in the day. One was made by Calco, the other one was made by Prestolite. Prestolite motors, replacements, you can buy. You can't buy the Calcos. They're just, I guess, less of them. Calco motors don't fit on the Calco little uh, hydraulic pump down there. So what I would need to do is buy a new Prestolite motor and then a Prestolite pump, and I'd be good. Prestolite pumps aren't available anymore. And the last ones that sold on eBay were in the four to $500 range. Way too much money for this little guy. That motor might work. I just need to fix it. And by fix it, I mean get these brushes fixed. You can buy just the brush top if you were in 1970. Long discontinued, not available anymore. And 
being kind of on the uh, less common pump side. Not something you're going to stroll across on eBay necessarily. So, only real option is to try to bend this back. There's too much going on here to try to reproduce it yourself with these brush holders being the way they are. So I have a broken spring, a broken brush, and a bent slash melted. Jeez, this thing is destroyed. And that is our biggest problem, that bulge and that bend. If we can remedy that, find brushes and find a new spring, might be able to fix this thing without any troubles. It's hard to guess if it was just heat or if it's pressure that bent this. Let's see if we can get it a little bit warm, get it a little bit pliable. So that is a heck of a lot better. So I noticed a number on these brushes. I don't know if it's 698 or 869. Let me do some look Googling. Well, here's where we're at. This is a 7 16 by 7 16 by 3 quarter brush. Uh, yeah, you're not finding this. I looked everywhere, not gonna happen. The replacement screws I need are 1032 by 4 inch. Phillips heads, not a problem. You can find those in stainless steel. Not with the shoulder, full, full thread, but they're available. Two bucks each, no big deal there. The problem now is the motor brush. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Uh, I can't find a used cap. I can't find replacement brushes because the part number of that was never advertised. You replace the whole cap. I cannot replace the motor. Just can't happen. Uh, I would need to find the bottom half of a uh, Presto light, you know, the pump, buy a $200 Presto light motor for it, install it on here, then spend $70 on each trim cylinder to get that fixed. So we're looking at, let's see, 340 plus four something, $700 to get this fixed. And that is just not going to happen. There is no way I'm going to spend $700 on this tilt and trim setup. And for another 200 I could just buy one of those CMC power trim and tilt kits. Just not going to happen. The other thing, too, the bracket here. Let me back up. Figuratively and literally. I don't actually want to use this motor. I want this power trim and tilt setup off of it. Because I want to put it on this motor. The problem with this motor, well, the problem with the power unit, it'll physically fit on this bracket. It'll bolt in. The lower half is the same. What's not the same is the attachment point here. I need to find one of these. None on eBay. Can't find any locally. I can't find any junk motors that has an old power trim and tilt. I need that bracket. It won't physically bolt on. 
So I need the bracket, I need a motor, I need a pump, and I need two cylinders. That's a lot of stuff I need, and I'm just, it's not going to happen right now. So it is coming off and going to get stored. The rest of the motor is going to get stored too, just for a parts bin, basically. You know, might as well just leave the whole thing together. Mm, not a bad idea. Yeah, well, well, we'll cross that bridge later. So stay tuned for this in the future, but that's that's where we are now.